So when I started with MakerBot, we were in a garage, and so assembly was very basic, and it was a build as you can. The first MakerBot wasn't really designed for manufacturability. It was designed and initially built by engineers. So it wasn't really made for the mass manufacturing. You flip it many times. It's not a seamless wiring. You can build it in many different ways. When you look at the fifth generation, manufacturing engineering was involved in the design for manufacturability. One of the improvements I made was that we set it up like an assembly line. Every build was broken down into the times that it takes to make it and then divided up among the operators. So we made a one-piece flow operation. So in order to make a MakerBot, you usually start with the base. So whatever goes on the bottom and you build up from there. The idea is that when you're assembling it, you don't have to flip it upside down or turn it on its side. That wherever, however you're building it, that you're always at the right angle and typically building up and adding subsystems on top of it. Not only did we make sure that fasteners were in an accessible place that you can reach, but also you try to reduce the number of fasteners so you're not screwing in 20 different things. You have a slide that holds two parts together and then you put in that final screw. You can build it seamlessly, that things make sense to go together. In terms of in the factory, pretty much every jig, fixture, sign, casing, everything is printed. Anything that doesn't require that extra sturdy base, like aluminum, will print. And we'll usually, even if it does require something a little more sturdy, we'll print it, keep it out on the floor for a while, make sure that the operators like it, and then go to our machine shop and, and build it.